A military court in South Sudan has sentenced 10 soldiers to prison for gang raping at least five aid workers and shooting dead a local journalist. Now, in July 2016, as rival soldiers clashed in Juba, some soldiers stormed the compound of the Terrain Hotel and committed the abuses. The trial has been seen as a major test of South Sudan's will to deal with crimes committed by its armed forces. Here is what some of the victims who spoke to the BBC two years ago had to say, that their testimony was voiced over by actors. When the soldiers first entered the building, they saw John run from one of the apartment rooms and they grabbed him and they threw him to the ground and they started beating him with rifle butts. And while this was happening, a few of the soldiers came from behind and were just shouting and, you know, one of the distinct words that came out was a word, Nuer. And this sort of acted like a trigger for the soldier holding a gun to John. Two shots were fired and he immediately fell to the ground. It was clear that the situation had really escalated. Successive waves of soldiers came into the room and they separated the men and the women. I was trapped in a room and repeatedly raped. Joining me from Nairobi is our Africa security correspondent, Tommy Oladipo. Tommy, the sentences have finally been handed down, but is there a sense that justice has been done? Well, there have been mixed reactions to uh, the trial and to the sentencing. First, uh, from the, the, the side of the rape victims, their representative, their lawyer, uh, said that the compensation that was uh, um, ordered to be paid out to them, $4,000 to each rape victim, uh, was described as embarrassing and insulting. Um, they felt like this did not do them justice. Uh, meanwhile, the defense lawyer uh, said he was shocked by the, that, by the sentence handed out to, uh, his, to his clients. Um, also watching very closely were humanitarian agencies and diplomats who sort of viewed this as a step in the right direction, but they said there's still a long way to go when it comes to justice relating to, uh, to men in uniform in, in South Sudan. But so then that, does this mark a change then? Because uh, the South Sudanese military has been seen uh, as being unaccountable for what happens or, uh, you know, among the military and towards the Sudanese people? Well, we have to go back to 2013. That's when the, the, the conflict broke out and there have been repeated uh, documentation of alleged abuses by, by uh, security forces. And, and um, all this time there hasn't been any, any kind of prosecution. This is the very first uh, when it comes to, um, to South Sudanese troops. And let's also remember that this is a high profile case because the victims were foreigners. And so lots of local victims who have not, um, who have not seen justice. Uh, it's also there have been questions about whether South Sudanese commanders, military commanders, able to also uh, exert their own authority over their own troops. Many of these troops are believed to be out of hand even to date. Uh, we see humanitarian um, convoys, aid workers being abducted, being arrested, even being killed as they go about their jobs in the country. So uh, the state of things in South Sudan is still Well, we appear to have lost uh, Tommy Oladipo there, but he, was, of course, was giving us an update on that uh, story from uh, South Sudan. Um, let's uh, now take a quick look at other stories making the headlines across Africa and the rest of the world. A Chinese business manager filmed making derogatory remarks about Kenyans has been deported from Kenya. The man was arrested after a video of him making a string of racist comments was widely shared on social media. Now, in the video, he can be seen referring to Kenyans as monkeys. Now, Italy has been urged to release six Tunisian fishermen who were arrested at sea on suspicion of smuggling migrants. Supporters of the fishermen from southeast coastal town of Zazis say their colleagues were simply aiding a boat in distress. Now, the boat carrying 14 people was trying to reach the Italian island of Lampedusa last week. Now, an American woman has been jailed in Australia for smuggling cocaine into the country in high-heeled shoes. Denise Marie Woodrum was arrested in Sydney last year after officials found the drugs stuffed inside the shoes and other belongings in her luggage. She pleaded guilty to illegally importing cocaine but told the court she was a victim of an online romance scam.